Uh, yeah, Do Dr. Everett Piper will be my guest in the State of the Union uh, next week. And uh, obviously we have four universities in Oklahoma uh, that are part of a lawsuit right now that's going all the way to the Supreme Court dealing with religious liberty issues. Uh, and Dr. Piper is part of that and will be one of the major voices nationally on what's happening in religious liberty. So he'll be my guest in the State of the Union. Okay. Um, any more you want to elaborate on that? I mean, she yeah. just, right when he came in, she... That's right, yeah. That's, we'll, that. That, that, that's interesting. She already knows that she's scooping everybody on that one because I think we're going to actually release that out tomorrow and let her know. It might have gone out today even, but we're trying to get that out to let folks know if they're interested. Was there any uh, obvious issue? I mean, obviously an intelligent gentleman. Uh, kind of yeah. Why did you want him to tell people... Yeah, obviously, uh, Dr. Piper is extremely sharp, uh, but a lot of Oklahomans don't know that Oklahoma is actually leading the way in trying to define out some of their religious liberty issues. And we have four of our universities that have petitioned all the way to the Supreme Court to clarify what is the role of religion in America and what role can the government have to be able to tell a religious institution, you can't go that far or we can define your religious practice or belief. And uh, Oklahoma Wesleyan University is one of those locations trying to help define out religious liberty for the entire country. Okay. Uh, the main issue in everybody's mind, uh, gun laws, gun control, yeah. what the president's uh, proposed. Where do you stand? What's your opinion on this? And what do you think works or doesn't work? Yeah, all day long today as I visit with people around Green Country and all in Tahlequah and meetings that I've had have circled around gun control. That's been the first question that's come up over and over again uh, in, in normal conversation. Uh, the president put out 23 different executive actions uh, in 2013 uh, saying that he's going to try to limit gun control. It ended up being a lot of different statements saying that they want to research and look at things. The president's now put out another set of, of executive actions that he wants to do, but I think just like his proposals in 2013, all that that really did in 2013 was increase gun sales across the country. Literally, there are twice as many gun sales now as they were when the president first took office. Uh, as the, the more the president talks about trying to limit access uh, to the Second Amendment, the more the gun sales increase around the country. Uh, because the president's not going to change the Second Amendment. He's trying to reach in and trying to say to people he doesn't want to have gun violence. No one wants to have gun violence. No one does. Not the city of Chicago, not Washington, D.C., not many places where there are very, very strong gun laws. There's not an interest in having gun violence. But what the president's trying to do is trying to limit access to guns to law-abiding citizens and other individuals instead of getting at the root cause. The root cause really is the, the social problems that we face. It's family uh, destruction. It's mental illness. Those are the things that we see over and over again. And one of the proposals I was pleased to see the president put out today was increased attention to the issue of mental illness and increased funding for some of those areas. That is an area where I can find common ground with the president. But continually trying to limit access to firearms to law-abiding citizens is inconsistent with our Constitution. That is something you brought up that... I hear people say, like, once he starts talking about it, people go out and they yeah. purchase a lot of guns. Right. So, I mean, that is something that it's not working for. Like, right. Uh, so, yes. So the president started talking about some of these executive actions in November, actually, and saying that he wanted to do something. Uh, the uh, Black Friday this past year was the single largest sale of firearms in the history of the country was Black Friday the day after Thanksgiving this, this past year. The previous spike on gun sales was actually the same month in 2013 the president announced his last uh, executive actions. Uh, we're up now to 24 million gun sales a year now. When the president first came into office, it was about 11.5 million uh, gun sales a year. Uh, so it's been a dramatic difference in just his time. And the more he talks about it, the more it increases gun sales as people are concerned that someone's going to try to pull away their Second Amendment. But it is our Second Amendment. This is something the president can't change. It's constitutionally protected for every citizen and should remain protected. Uh, one thing you hit on, mental illness. Yeah. Um, is that something that he should carry forward, the next president should carry forward, really hit home about that, try to get that uh, taken care of? and and put money into that, I guess that's something that's important. Yeah. This is something not only our state should do, but federal government should also look at it, and that's the issue of mental illness. Uh, our state has to raise a greater priority on how we handle mental illness. It's a taxing issue, not only in many of our medical facilities, but for a lot of local law enforcement that actually help transit uh, people that have mental illness to long distances. And it's very difficult, especially on our rural uh, law enforcement facilities. 
We have to address this as a nation. We can't just release people out into the street and say things will get better. They don't get better. This is a health issue. And we as a nation uh, seem to want to turn away and say that mental illness is different than other physical illnesses. Uh, it is a physical issue as well within the brain. And we need to treat it that way. And that's one of the things that's been unresolved for a very long time for us as a state and also in our federal health care. Okay, uh, last question. Um, mental health doctors um, take an oath, like a lot of oaths, to not share patient information. That's correct. So if you go in with mental illness and they know that you're a threat and you've said some things, do you feel that that law should be changed, that the, the doctor should come forward and say, hey, John over here has an issue. Right. We need to make sure that you know he doesn't go forward with that. Is that something you think should change? Yeah, the, the United States Constitution and the constitutional rights that all of us have cannot be removed by anything other than a court. Uh, so a single individual can't say, my perception is that this person should lose a constitutional right and you lose a constitutional right. Not a doctor, not anyone on that. So it's been one of those very clear things. If you commit a felony, you've gone to a court, you've been convicted of a felony, you lose your Second Amendment rights. Uh, but if you just have someone say, hey, I think this person has some mental Ill, uh, instability, you can't lose a constitutional right unless a court actually does that. So it would have to actually go through the process anytime someone's accused of something to actually get to a court to remove a constitutional right. That's important for Americans to remember because there's a lot of talk now to say if you end up on a certain list or if you end up a certain way or someone has a certain opinion about you, you should lose your right to be able to keep and bear arms. That's a constitutional protection. You don't lose your right of free speech. You don't lose your freedom of religion uh, based on someone else's perspective or ending up on some list. That has to be done through a court. That's our American system. Anything else I haven't touched on? I mean, that's why I'm here today is the, the gun issue what people have been talking about. Anything else you'd like to say at all? Yeah, I mean, the, the prime issue that I, I, I really think personally, the president's baiting a lot of people around the country to try to inflame all these issues again. He's done this multiple times on the gun issue as he's trying to lay out a bunch of executive orders that the Supreme Court over decades have now clarified that the constitutional right to the Second Amendment should not be taken away by any executive or by any other action by a state. So the president is trying to goad us into a large scale fight where he thinks he has the high ground on it. This is a constitutional right. It will continue to be a constitutionally protected right. And we should treat it as the way that it is actually listed in our constitution. This is a right and let's continue to protect it that way and not allow the president to draw us into an election year politics uh, fight over an issue that's long since resolved in the courts.